the families are over halfway through their time at summer school. And Mr Drew still has a mountain to climb. Come on, up. Do you need to open the curtains? There's your uniform. All right. For a lot of these boys, their inability to manage their relationships with each other and with other people is a major issue. I'm going to have to move you. Really? You want to try that, do you? We've had a number of them who have at some point shouted at people and sworn at people. And actually, that's something we're not really getting over with those boys. Kiss my ass! We still have a long way to go, and it does become something we keep challenging them on. So far, periods between lessons, when boys are on the move, have been particularly challenging. And today is no exception. Zane, Jake. Dominic, the shortest boy at summer school, is being taunted about his height. Mr Vidler, who at his school has a special responsibility for pupil welfare, confronts the culprits, including 12-year-old Aston. I don't know why you're being so horrible right now, but it's absolutely awful. Major, major. Right, that, young man, does earn you a consequence. There is no doubt about that. I'm just singing major. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just saying... Singing major. And I'm just saying consequence. So f Second consequence. Aston and his twin brother Dylan live in South Wales with their dad Mark and mum Fiona. Both Aston and Dylan don't like being told what to do. No, I'm still on that. I... No, I am. No, I'm not. No, Aston, you swap around after you hit the wickies. They're twins, obviously, and they are real handful. <laughs> Dylan, you idiot! Aston and Dylan were both excluded from primary school, and each of them have spent time in a pupil referral unit. The most alarming thing that Dylan's done is where he's been physically aggressive with the head. Master, he's basically just run riot. The twins are now attending a mainstream secondary school, but the problems haven't gone away. They've both received fixed term exclusions, Aston on three occasions. If I could change one thing about Aston's behaviour, I would change his short fuse. Yeah. With the yeah. boy's behaviour going from bad to worse, Fiona's running out of answers. You try so many things. Have I been too... Have I been too hard? Have I been too soft? It's not that... You know, I can't be accused of not caring. As a direct result of today's name-calling, Aston will miss out on the boys' reward time. Oh, oh, run! I get really angry when people don't listen to me. Apparently I was back chatting to Dom, making fun of him because of his height, but I wasn't. I was like, I'm a little midget. And he says it's offensive. Unfortunately for Aston, his version of events isn't convincing anyone. Obviously, I mean, his, his part in the original thing, I mean, you were there, Ben, when they walked across with Dom. What was his original yeah, thing? It was actually quite nasty. He uh, was really quite incredibly rude on that one. He yeah. told me to... Uh, he's, he said I was a fat that I should off and not speak to him. He called me a bald fat and he used really some quite appalling language. So this is a shock for me that he's letting himself down yeah. so much. Are you coming to join us? Why don't you come and join us and have the conversation, Ashton? You... Are you ready for this now or not? Yes, why didn't make fun of Donna, mate? Okay. Donna needs getting the Hey, hey. hey. First of all, if somebody says something and you don't like it, even if somebody says, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to offensive, if the person who hears it takes it as that, then you have to accept that that's how someone takes it. And that's life. OK? But he took okay. it as that. Aston, do you understand that? Yes. That's it. OK, stop. Can I just say, that I didn't need a yes in that tone. Actually, that was all I wanted, was a yes. Yeah. That's all we expect. Sorry, Mr Drew. Sorry, Mr Fiddler. That's better. Then we'll move on, Aston, and we try to make sure tomorrow is not the Aston we've seen today. Yeah. Kids aren't born bad. If I have a young person who's really acting up, who's going crazy and all the rest of it, it's very, very rare that it's a personal thing. And even if it is, I'm the growing up in this situation, so it's not for me to get angry. You just have to be prepared to reinvest. You go back the next day 
and you put it in again and then you go back the next day and you put it in again. If you are expecting at any stage to have to stop doing that, then, then don't go into teaching. To tackle the ongoing lack of respect, Mr Drew has come up with a high-risk strategy. He's organised an away match against a local football team. Sit down, boys. Mr Volante has just a couple of days to whip the boys into shape. I'm taking a leap of faith in you boys that you can go out there and show people what you're about. We are going to show resilience, we are going to show character and most of all, we are going to show discipline boys. This football game is a gamble. Some of these boys aren't even allowed to take part in school teams because their behaviour is so bad. They need to step up to the plate and start showing some proper respect for others. The boys' training is focusing on some of the basics. Control, passing and dribbling. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Who says that? Barack Obama. Stop. Hold your touch now, Joe. Well done. But the session is marked by arguments. It's not free kick! Petulance. Man of steel. Nice touch, G. And the kind of language that results in an immediate red card. Swearing of these boys is very ingrained. It isn't something that can be broken overnight. It's easier to break some of the other habits for these families than it is to break the habit of the swearing. And it's what I always refer to as lazy swearing. There's no effort involved. There's no thought involved. With the football match just days away, Mr. Drew summoned some of the worst offenders to his office. I'm not prepared to speak to you. You are acting like this. Nine-year-old twins Joe and Jake live in the West Midlands with full-time mum, Emma. Over the past year, the boy's behaviour has become more extreme. Jake has been in trouble at school for throwing a chair at a teacher. Joe has been excluded for fighting. Life with Joe and Jake can be really hard. You wake up and you don't know what the day is going to have in store for you, really. You're not great, you're not me They just, like, fight with you to get their own way. With two other children under the age of five, Emma is struggling to cope. By the time their boys are like 14, 15, you know, they're going <laughs> to, they are going to be locked up or something like that because if they keep carrying on the way they do, they're going to get into like serious trouble. Jake is first into Mr. Drew's office. Yeah, they make the choice to go on that team or not play at oh, all. Your choice. Oh, um, he will go on that team or he will not play at all. I'm in oh, charge here, yeah, not him. But what we'll do is we'll make sure that we'll uh, get this sorted out at the end of the lesson. Because I'm not accepting that type of behaviour. How do you feel at this moment in time, having sat and watched Bad. yourself, Jake? Bad. Right. How do you sound? Ridiculous. Okay. What's ridiculous about it? Me screaming. You need to stop. It is embarrassing. And actually, it does make you look silly. And you're better than that. No. Next up is Zane. When you look at it, I noticed as soon as you saw yourself do that, your head went straight down. So why did your head go straight down? Because I don't want to hear that. OK. Why don't you want to hear it? Because I didn't. OK. The fact that your head went straight down means that you know it's wrong. Do you ever want your mum to feel like that? No. No. Does your mum want you to change completely and be absolutely perfect? No. What does she want you to be? Just better. OK. But I think it's time for you to reflect upon how you behave and to think about the things you do. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. Good man. Last in is Jake's twin brother, Joe. Joe, I'm afraid you're not going to go into the lesson then. 
My teachers are human beings. Like everyone's teachers in every school, they are human beings. And they have a right not to be sworn at. They have a right to be treated with respect. Have we failed to show you respect? Do we show you respect? Do we show you respect all the time? Even when you are being incredibly difficult, do we still show you respect? So as we show it to you, I think we're entitled to expect it back. Yeah? OK. I want you to stop. And if you don't like something, do you know what? Chin up. Suck it up. Get on with it. You can't always have your own way. Off you go. OK. It's a new day at summer school. Come on. What? Between pages. Brown flakes. <sighs> you know what you like when you haven't had any any breakfast on the morning. Ah! Gets to about eleven o'clock and you you cause in World War Three. With World War Three narrowly avoided, it's off to class. Eyes on me, thank you, Mr. Vidler. Mr. Grist. Miss Skinner is conjuring up some mathematical magic. I'm pretty sure. That I can read your mind. I can read your mind. I can read your mind. Is that your answer? Yes. Oh, would you? That's amazing. Would you oh, look have a round of applause for that. that? And with plenty of encouragement. Dominic, correct. The boys are beginning to show some real progress in the classroom. But out on the pitch, the beautiful game still feels rather ugly. Stop! Stop now! With the boys' football match fast approaching, Mr Drews arranged a family sports day to encourage some much-needed team spirit. Sports day is an integral part of any school's calendar. We know that these boys struggle with not getting their own way. So we're two and a half weeks in and it gives us a really good opportunity to see what progress they've made. Right, can I have everybody's full attention? Thank you, Maxie. The most important thing I'm after is that skill from the parents, as well as the pupils, is resilience, not got given in, and every activity that we do, we're working together as a team to try and accrue points. Give it your all. Give it your best, OK? The boys and their parents are divided into four teams. Tell me what country, Dom, you are captaining today. America. America. Next, we're moving on to Jake. England. England. We have Aston. Tell me, Aston, what country are you representing? And I don't think it's going to take much of a guess. Wales! Tell me, Max, what country are you representing Jamaica. as captain? Jamaica! Sports Day's kicking off with an old favourite. On your mark! Get set! Go! Come on, Keith! Come on! Points mean prizes! <laughs> Teamwork is the order of the day in the next event. Well done, Tom, Christina, keep working together. Look forward, it helps if you look forward. Sports day's going pretty well so far, actually. Uh, I'm having a good laugh. Um, it's really nice seeing the parents uh, and, and the boys like, interacting and mucking about. And it's quite good for them to just see that you don't have to win any, everything, you don't have to worry about it like that. Too early for a shower for them, boys. All of the teams are still in contention as the tug of war looms. Get set! It's England versus Jamaica. Go! Go on, Jamaica! Team Jamaica's defeat leaves them in second place. Some of the boys find it hard to swallow. You can't all win. Somebody has to come first, and quite right, someone has to come first. You know, it's a sports day, it's competitive. The sports day champions are England. Captain G, round of applause, please. Yay! Turn around and lift the trophy, kiss it, lift it up nice and high. Yay! It's medals and handshakes all round. But eight-year-old Max, the youngest boy at well summer done, school, well done, well won't done. play by the rules. Well you shake hands. Don't give him a medal if you don't shake hands, sir. Okay? Don't shake hands. Please, you. You don't, you'll get a medal. Sportsman. Yeah, you can, but he's not, if he doesn't shake hands, he's not getting a medal. Sportsmanship, it's his choice. Yeah. Okay. Shake hands, Christina. 
Okay. Yeah, listen, well you done. get a medal, then. Well Your choice, Dan. You, you want to shake hands with me? You get a medal. Shake hands with Can you shake hands with Mr. Christ instead? No, not really. You can't. A couple of wobbles towards the end. We've seen Maxi, um, obviously his team um, lost, and it was all about his inability to sort of accept that he'd been defeated. We're going to be having a football match this week, and he's going to be going on the, uh, on the field of play. And he needs to learn sportsmanship, where you uh, learn to, at the end of an activity, even if you've lost, you shake each other's hands and you walk off the pitch. Max finally backs down and agrees to a handshake. I don't you know what, I, I, you know, all I want you to do, right, is learn from these little letters, right? That's yeah. Not him. Yeah. It's not him. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah, in where? In his head. Yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. You know, we, we get past it. I've already forgotten about it. It's shook my hands now, but it's just... It's, I, I, I want the same from him as everybody but here to do well. But you can't expect him sometimes to... It's when, it, when it's a public display for me, it's just defiance, to be honest, and it's a bit rude. There you go. Thank you very much. A really good victory. Well done. was doing fine. Um, and then Max wouldn't shake. Uh, Mr. Valenti's hand, but that's his choice, surely. And I feel that Max just kind of at that moment did not want to shake his hand. It wasn't anything to do with him being horrible. He just did not want to touch him. And I can't force my son to touch somebody else if he doesn't really want to. Sometimes the teachers will make calls their parents don't necessarily agree with, but that's their job and that's their expertise. But everyone gets a medal for taking part, and I think that's quite right. Because we've got 11 boys who two weeks ago couldn't have spent the afternoon doing that, so they do all deserve a medal for taking part, as do their parents, partly for being their parents. Success. <laughs> I've never been in a winning team before, <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. Really enjoyed it. Jake, please make the right choice. <laughs> please. I think the kids learned an important lesson today, uh, never give up, keep on going, even if you're coming last, just keep on going and hang in there. Sports Day has been a success, but the battle against bad language is far from over. Mr Drew has begun to tackle the boys, now he needs their parents to accept a few home truths. You need to be clear about what is acceptable in your house. One of the most powerful examples children can have are the examples that they live with day in and day out. He's enlisted behaviour expert Tracy Campbell to help get his message across. If you permit swearing in your house, your child will go to school with the head teacher, Mr Drew, and they'll swear. Because in their mind, the message they get from their household is, this is acceptable. I have a very clear line, you will not swear at my members of staff, my staff don't... I basically say kids, I say, my staff don't get out of bed in the morning to be sworn at by you. And I've had a response from parents, like, he said what? He's a right little <laughs> isn't he? And I sit there and I'm like, and there's your answer to why it happened. When it comes to letting bad language go unchecked, Clark's dad, Keith, is one of the biggest culprits. Let's go, asshole! Now Keith's hands-off approach has landed him in the hot seat. Okay. Um what's going through your mind? Jesus. Um I just thought what you know what why is he acting like this? Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of like stood there, kind of thinking, well, what do you do with a boy like that? But if you look at your face while he's doing it, mm. you probably are a little bit shocked by what he's doing, but your face conveys, not that you think it's funny, but you don't look cross about it. Yeah. You look as if, I don't, I, don't, I don't think you think it's funny. It's clear that you're not sitting there going, oh, this is really funny, but your face conveys to him almost like, oh, that's quite, that's a little bit giggly. I think that's if sort of I was thing. in that situation, I think I would have said, Clark, can you please come back in the room, please? Um. What have you just said to me? Is that appropriate? Then I would have asked him to answer, and then I would have said, says, then I would have said well, what do you have to say to Dad? In the moment, it's very important for the child to get the message. We are united in this. Mum disapproves of your behaviour, and so do I. Does he know absolutely that you completely disapprove of it. 
is he getting it from you every single time that you keep disapprove of it? Yeah. Because every single time he doesn't get that, it chips another step away to him thinking it's okay. We get it every time, but it doesn't seem to stem his behaviour of, like, keep doing it. Well, you have got to be relentless on it, and you've got to make it clear to him all the time, yeah, that's not acceptable, it's not acceptable, it's not acceptable. Keith's behaviour of trying really hard to be matey with his son is not that uncommon a behaviour. And I think sometimes Keith goes for the easier life and easier option, and actually that's not your job. And your children won't thank you for it. They won't thank you for being their mate. They, you know, they've got their own mates. They don't need you to be their best mate. Your job as a parent is to hold the line. The families are gearing up for another day of lessons. Excited about going to school? Never excited to go to school. Down slowly and low. That beauty. Your hands down with it. Wait, yeah. First good day to the deer. Come on, let's get that. It's time for assembly. But Tom is still getting ready, and he's come up with a new dress code. Back home on the Wirral, Tom's doing fine academically. It's his behaviour that's the problem. Two years ago, his dad died, and Tom has increasingly landed himself in trouble, leading to a permanent exclusion from his last school. I shouldn't be silly, yeah, but I can't help it. Like an estimated 5% of children in mainstream education, Tom has been diagnosed with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I don't know what else I can do. Tom because I've tried everything and nothing seems to be working. I'm going to give you a tablet now then. It is perfectly possible for children with any defined condition, with any diagnosed condition, to function successfully in a classroom. My child can't behave because of his ADHD. No, it isn't that simple. Your child's behaviour is affected by his ADHD, but it doesn't mean that your child cannot be taught to manage that behaviour and that the professionals involved cannot help your child to do that. Medication can help to alleviate some of the symptoms of the condition, such as poor concentration and impulsive behaviour. But Tom hasn't taken his tablets this morning. So Tom, I'm just waiting for you to stop speaking because I'm not going to talk while you talk. Do you want to start? Because you're going to have to leave my assembly in a minute, which will be a very, very sad start to the week. Sorry? OK, that's fine. Mr Valente, if you could be so kind. Tom, outside. That way, please. OK. The first class of the day is science with Mr Vidler. OK, guys, can you sat down, Maxine? The lesson is only just underway, but Tom is already causing trouble. Tom. Tom. Let him go. Tom. Okay. Okay. He needs to go. Tom. I'm really disappointed that you did that in my lesson. And you need to go to the quiet room. Nick, okay? Do you want to go back and say something? Can you punch my bra off and no one to be a freezer? Lou, it's going to be getting. Yes, you are. Wait downstairs, Tom. 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 I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to protect you, Tom, from yourself and from others. Tom, listen. Listen to me. You speak it. Listen. Listen. Calm down. Just go to the quiet room for me. Go to the quiet room. Quiet room for me. It's not the first time the teachers have noticed Tom's behaviour being affected by him not taking his medication. I walked outside and his mum said, "Come on, come on, Tom." You need to take your tablet. So straight away I went, why hasn't he had that tablet first thing this morning? Because basically, we've set that kid up today to fail. Yeah? yeah. Well, no, we haven't. His mum should have done that. By not giving him that, you might as well last night send him out to play football in Wellington boots, filled them Wellington boots with sand. I am angry that he missed out on something that he would have enjoyed. I don't lose. I had loads of lovely kids in here. Mum doesn't lose. She was off doing something else. 
the only loser in that situation is Tom. Mr. Valante wants to get to the bottom of why Tom hasn't had his medication. He like holds me to ransom a bit because he'll say, I'll have it in a minute, I'll have it when this, and I'll, I'm like, no, you'll have it now. Yeah. And it's quite a battle to get him to take it. I mean, he will take it, yeah. but I want him to take it as soon as he gets out of bed. Mm. I mean, sometimes like mornings, I do forget. Yeah. It is quite hard when you're r rushing, getting yeah. everyone, you know, getting him ready. I'll be honest with you, yeah. I'm not sure to. Having the medication every yeah. morning, early doors, that's no sort of half seven, yeah. quarter eight, will have a massive impact upon him, yeah. sort of engaging mm -hmm. in the classroom yeah. and making sure that he's in the right frame of mind. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him and say, listen, have yeah. your medication when you wake up, come down and have your breakfast mm. straight away. He's got the potential yeah, to do really, yes. really, really well in yeah. life. You know, he gets himself into the right school with the right support, yeah. he'll thrive. Really. Yeah. Tom eventually takes his tablets. But he's still agitated by the morning's events. Tom! 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 What is the matter with you? Tom! Tom, get off him! Tom, I don't know what's the matter with you. But you will... Now then, you didn't need to come over here. You did not need to attack him. You did not need to mess around with our stuff. You now got a consequence for later on. You need to go. It's time for Tom to spend some time away from everyone else, to be honest. Oh, Jesus. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're not. Do it. You're not Just doing it. Just you're not doing it. Just okay, settle down. Just concentrate on, on settling down, mate. It's me, girl. Yeah. Just uh, let him lie for a minute. Can you stay with him, sir? He needs to basically be excluded and be out for a while. As soon as you take the law into your own hands and try and hit somebody, right, then you become the person who gets into the bother. And there's got to be a consequence of that. No. It comes back to this thing again about, right, they're winding you up because they know they're going to get a reaction from you. I said to you I'm always going to be honest with you, didn't I? It's important that I tell you the truth. Because if you don't hear the truth, Tom, you're not going to ever be able to get past this. Across campus, the afternoon lessons continue without Tom. So you can put different transitions in between the different film clips. The boys' mentors are helping them to make films for their families. I think my mum is beautiful. And she's strong. Hurry up, slow coach. While the rest of the boys throw themselves into the task. <laughs> Whoa, I really thought I was going to get a kick in the face then. Tom and his mum, Christina, have been summoned to Mr Drew's office. After so much progress over two weeks, he has attacked and hit two boys without any real provocation for it at all. And actually, that's another level with him. And it's important to deal with that on the spot. What do you want me to do for you? Make sure nobody winds me up. I can't do that. I can't do that. I cannot sit here and look you in the eye and promise you and guarantee you that nobody will ever wind you up. I can't do it. Because life isn't like that. And no head teacher of any school you ever attend can sit and look you in the eye and say, I promise that nothing bad will ever happen to you. I look at you and I see absolutely massive potential. I see this boy who is so intelligent. I see this boy who has the brightest possible future. All of that I see in you. And then I see what happens this afternoon. I made, I made you promises at the start that I would help you and I would work with you, yeah? You are precious to us. But that doesn't mean we're going to give you an easy time all the time and just hide what you do wrong. It doesn't mean we're going to make your life easy, does it? So you are not to go out this evening. You are not to be out and about with the other children. You are to be with your mum. You are to be in your room. OK? Quietly out of my room with your mum, please. Off you go. 
Thank you, Tom. It'd be very easy now to turn around and say, do you know what, I give up. I give up. I say you're too dangerous. Brilliant. So another person gives up on Tom. And even if, and I'm sure nobody has ever said to him, I give up on you, but the message that you send through your actions to children in this position is, I give up on you. He is a little boy. He's not an adult. He is an 11-year-old boy who is about to go to secondary school. We need to try to make it work for him. Tom becomes the first boy at summer school to be excluded from lessons. An ADHD child can be fearless and may dive straight into a situation without thinking of the consequences. And he can be rougher than is he intends. Others may not invite him to their game to join their games. Which is sad because he has a loving, caring nature. It's been a peaceful night. Good morning! Today's football training is the last session before tomorrow's match. Come on, Zane, keep going, head up. Mr Volante has named 12-year-old Spencer, who's banned from playing for his school team at home, as his captain. Spencer, you are going to be the Alan Hansen of the team, OK? Alan Hansen used to play for Liverpool in the 1970s, 80s. Cool as a cucumber. With your shots, I want you to rip the back of that net off the goal. Okay. He's the oldest student at summer school and one of three boys diagnosed with ADHD. Back home in Kent, Spencer lives with his mum Sarah, a dinner lady, and dad Stephen, a print worker. Spencer's been excluded from school five times. Spencer doesn't usually start a fight, but he will finish it. He just grab me by the collar so I punch him in the face. He's only got to put one more foot wrong and he's out. And that's it. No matter how much you sit down and talk to him, and it just doesn't seem to get through, does it? I know my, my son is a lovely boy. I really do know he's lovely. Um, I just wish he'd show everyone else that. I really do. Spencer's vice-captain is Aston's twin brother, Dylan. The boys are realistic about the size of the task ahead. There'll probably be a fight with the other team. Predicting if everything goes right, we're still probably going to lose. That's the captain, and this is the Today's training session follows a familiar pattern. Jake, Jake, that'll get you out of this lesson. Right, you're out of the lesson. Not having you throwing things in the lesson. Out you go. With no sign of peace breaking out, it's time to restore some order. Come and sit down, Zane. Tom, come sit down in front of me. Come and sit down, Zane. OK, you're a team. And you're a team that's taking part in the competitive football match tomorrow. We are not ready. We're not being anywhere near to ready. You do something about it. I am not going there tomorrow afternoon to make a show of ourselves. I want every single one of you there to, to go there tomorrow and make yourselves proud of each other and make your parents proud. Why is it that all of you boys like playing football, excuse me, but you're not playing for teams? Because I'm telling you now, every one of you, you here, boys, are good enough to play football. But you know what? You're making life hard for your coaches, for your managers, for your school teachers. Mr Valanti, can I ask you a question? Why is it that nobody on this team, even though I'm shouting my head off, pass to me? Cause they don't pass to me. No, no, you, no. Well, tell you what then, Clark. Why don't you then, right, go and win the ball yourself and you can have your own pass on the ball? We're going to start this game again. And we're going to start this game with a bit of... With a bit of heart, without the bickering, we're going to restart it without the whinging, and we're going to restart it without the hacking at one another. I'm not fucking playing. Clark. Clark. Anyone passes to me. Clark, I listen. feel like a bird of shite. Clark. Clark. Come on down. I really, really, really want you to come down and just be safe, yeah? 
I understand. I'm, I'm nervous. They've been just doing things uh, today during that, that, that football match that just are not all right. Sometimes it just seems like it's so easy for them to do the right thing. Why aren't they just doing the right thing? I look at the football match that's coming up and I wonder whether or not it's a step too far at this stage. But actually, that's my little down moment. If we don't take the risk with these boys, we're not going to succeed. So we will carry on and I'm absolutely convinced it'll be the right thing to do. It's the day of the big game. This evening, the boys will be Mr Drew's ambassadors as they play an away match against a local football team. They're making banners for their supporters. Let's work as a team of freshly slot. The boys have decided to call their team the Panthers. Go on, Panthers, go! Do Beat the best. rest! Beat the other team into your best! That's it, come on. Yeah, but I'm not wearing no. my best. Oh, oh straight, sir. One of the boys is putting in some extra practice. For Tom, being part of today's game has a special significance. In the past, my behaviour has um, stopped me from doing things I like, and, but it's really, really important to me because um, like, I like football and I didn't used to be a good sport, but now I'm changed and I'm a better sport now. Tom was picked once and then he got, because he was his bad behaviour, that he got told that he couldn't play, so he'll be over the moon that he's finally got to play football. But just hopefully, fingers crossed, that he'll walk off and shake all the other players' hands and I can be proud of him. With just an hour until kickoff, it's time to let the Panthers loose. Like a team, it's not like a team. Let's let these boys know that we're going to be giving them a game here tonight. They all look great. They're all in the black and white, and Tom's in his yellow. They look really professional. Look really good. <laughs> High knees. Yeah, really good. And it's amazing to see if he will actually stay on the pitch. They look like a team. We seem yeah. like an act like a team. <laughs> one. Yeah. We've all stepped out here, boys, today and put our reputations, I'll be honest with you, on the line. Because there's going to be a lot of people out there turning around and say, this is going to be a disaster. And I'll be blatantly honest with you. People will turn around and say, they haven't got the discipline. They haven't got the behaviour. They're not going to be able to, Joe, concentrate and cooperate. But I'm telling you now, I trust you. Every single one of them people over there trust you. And I know that we are capable, boys, I've given this a real good go. Do not let yourself down. It's about all of us, Carl. Oh, no, one of us put a foot on the ball. No, no, no don't be ridiculous. At last. Someone's going to die. Oh, come, right, on. come on, we've got to win this, yeah? Yeah. 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 We're no, no, but just... Oh, hey, man, just don't, 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 yeah, everyone no. put the hand in the middle. No, one, no, two, yeah. no, we're not even... Oh. No, you just Amen. don't argue and just pass, yeah? yeah. You just gotta be like and don't <laughs> Just be yourself. Oh. Stop being stop being stupid you know. Right, right and there's be, one out. and oh. just Try. be strong, yeah. Oh, Put in a strong right, right. Three, two, one. Two. one. Panthers! Yeah. Also <laughs> shoot on Whenever you watch a group of students from your school play, you want them to be good, you want them to do well, but you just want them to take part and you want them to try really hard. They are representing themselves, they are representing their parents, they are representing our growing school community. I just feel really proud just to look at them and look at my boys playing. The Panthers are lining up against Elsinham Youth, a club which has been established for over a decade. It's seven aside, with 30 minutes each way. Oh, 
So actually, here's a big moment. They've let in a goal. Okay, so they've let in their first goal. But look, we've got heads up. We haven't got the argument. And actually, it shows how far we've come in the three weeks that we've been together that they're able to do this. One little ball into the cross. Look at the discipline, look at the standards that they're actually uh, they're carrying out at the moment. Made up, couldn't have asked for a better start, really. So, really, really pleased how it's going. Doing really well. Been the brilliance. <laughs> at half time, the Panthers are trailing 1 0. I'm going to ask you, everyone, are you enjoying this? Yeah. Yes. Because you look like you're enjoying it, boys. You know what? You're proving every person on this side, side of this pitch here that we could trust you. Every person on the side of the pitch there is unbelievably proud of you right now, boys. A few minutes into the second half, Mr Drew's boys go 2-0 down. But it doesn't dampen the spectators' spirits. Hey, come on, resilience! Day one, imagine this on day one. Imagine this on day one. It's amazing what they managed to do. You need to get fat. It could have been a disaster. But it's not, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. The guys are doing brilliantly. I'm just so happy, really, really happy. Absolutely amazing. Well done, Tom. Well done, Tom. Absolutely amazing. Full time, the Panthers have lost 3 0, but the boys have done themselves proud. I've been teaching 15 years now, and actually, that's got to be one of my top moments of anything. And the biggest thing for me is that they have shown that actually they can work together. There is so much potential for these lads. Really good, really. I just couldn't believe everybody cheering us on. It was electrifying. It was all right. Really fun. I got to play the whole She's match without coming it, off. Now my legs are really hurting. <laughs> At the moment, as far as I'm concerned, I've got 11 boys because they, all, all 11 of them have made me so proud. No swearing, no kicking each other, no stropping. They all played on the pitch and each and every one of them had a smile on their face. We've just been beat 3-0. It's the best 3-0 defeat I've ever been part of in my entire life as a football coach and as a manager. When you are positive, when you keep working together, when you encourage your children to accept the rules, to behave in a certain way, when you encourage them to follow the instructions of others and not just think about themselves and sometimes put themselves aside, what can be achieved? And I think that what we've done this evening will help these families understand that they need to commit to that whole package because this is such a great success for their sons to be involved in. These boys can do anything. They can do anything. <laughs> 